All right, Michael, one of my favorite things in spy movies is the spy going to get out of town. They go to some, like, place where they dig up a bag and it's got some extra identities and enough cash to get out of town. That, like, escape package, like, the born identity is right. built off that kind of MacGuffin, has always been one of my favorite props in movies. And that's where we started, talking about making something like that, but in the mid-century, the 1940s. Right, which... As you guys took that charge and <laughs> ran several marathons with it. Tell me, tell me where, we, where we went. So this was an effort between both myself and the graphic designer here at Ohio's Press, Kim Behrens, who put yeah. an enormous amount of work into this. And she approached it from the perspective of someone who does research for a living and is a graphic designer. And I approached it from the perspective of, of as a prop master yeah. and a historian. And we just kind of went hog wild with this. <laughs> this is... And, and this is the kind of thing that would happen yeah, in a movie. It right? would, you, yeah. you get involved with the with the with the the charge, mm -hmm. and you want to add to the story. Because because I've gotten a similar brief before yeah. of I need these items fill in the blanks. Right, right, so right. and what I got from you was money and some passports. Yeah. But we also needed the character to be fleshed out, and we decided to give the your character some life, and we added some history in there. And then, why are you running? Who are you running from? Oh. How do you get out? What are the methods by which you exit, etc.? So we arbitrarily created a time period that you lived in Paris, that you're an, uh, an agent working for the United States. But at that time, the United States did not have a foreign intelligence apparatus. Right, the OSS that did, was just beginning. Yeah, and the OSE did, was its predecessor, or SOE, uh, it, its predecessor didn't come into play until 1942. So we placed you in Paris on the 30th of May, 1940, the day that <laughs> France has fallen. And you receive a telegram, an emergency telegram in code that you have to get out and your only exit is Casablanca. Oh my God, I'm getting such chills. <laughs> there are so many beautiful pieces of ephemera and peppernelia here. Is mm -hmm. that how you say it? Yeah, pepernelia, yeah. And it's, uh, it's, some of it is original oh my and goodness. some of it is stuff that we've remade. Oh. So it's a mixed bag, but all of it tells a story of both your life before, who you really are, yeah. and then who you had to become okay. and how you get out. Incredible. Well, let's walk piece by piece through that story. Of course, absolutely. Okay, so when you gave us the brief, yeah. and, and Kim Behrens and I sat down and decided who you were, we chose that your actual name, your real identity, is Adam Savage. Okay. You lived in New York City. And by the way, uh, the CIA, from what I understand, that is referred to, the industry term is your true name. Your true name. Okay. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. So your true name is Adam <laughs> Savage. You lived in New York. You were recruited by the War Department to act as a courier, which is what we called as foreign service agents at that time. You trained okay. under what at that time would later become known as the SOE under the British, because all of our intelligence at that time came from the British. Uh -huh. Because, and this is my favorite quote ever, the United States didn't have an intelligence apparatus because a gentleman did not read another gentleman's mail. That was how they felt about it. You know what's so funny about that is that when you go back and you research Archimedes and you research um, shooting arrows mm -hmm. and projectiles, there was a point in warfare what was considered bad form <laughs> to shoot somebody from a distance because you should be fighting. Yeah, you should be reckoning. fighting up close. And yeah, it was, that it was like cheating. But it was all this like leftover mentality. It was the same right, way that right. they felt about U-boats, that submarines were ungentlemanly. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, that they, sort of, I mean, they really kind of are. They but. totally are. So we created your life in New York. <laughs> uh, your we, your uh, driver's license is being printed right now. Your period driver's license is being printed. And it's the three year driver's license, which there's a very real story behind that. Why? Oh, really? So we set this in 1940, of course, the fall of France. In New York, at that time, driver's licenses were one year. But this would have been filmed in 1942, uh -huh. when the war was on, as a propaganda film. Because that's how we approach this. And at that time... Oh, so you didn't just invent the story, you invented the, the, why the story was constructed why the, in period. Yeah. But also, what they would have used at the time, which at that time, the New York driver's license was three years. Uh -huh. So since it's filmed in 42 they would have used the three-year license instead of the one, yeah, because that was what was available is, at the time. I love that esoterica. So you, you one, you had, you as a, as a uh, hobby, you were a writer. Well, right. before you left New York, you pawned off your Smith Karana <gasps> typewriter. So this is a pawn ticket. A pawn ticket. From 1939. Yep. And Before this, clearly I was making some Christmas money. Right, absolutely. <laughs> and or you, you, we decided that you were getting rid of stuff you couldn't take with you when oh you're going goodness. to Europe, because that's when you left for Europe right at the end of December in 1939. This is, I just would love to talk about this for one second. Mm -hmm. It's like when you make paper props and you print them with a laser printer 
and then you handle something that is offset print. Yeah, it's, it's very obvious. It's super obvious. Yes, it's very There's obvious. There's no comparison. Yeah. And like any kind of detailed high level close up would show and reveal what feels like these very true mm -hmm. artifacts of offset printing where you've got that bleed, a little bit of bleed right. from the stacking, yep. from the, it's just. Yeah, there's a t totally different feel to it. And these, these tickets are, they're not period tickets. They were not made in the 40s. These were right. made in the 70s. But they, they've been reused so many times. We, yeah. we went with a lot of stuff that was reprinted. They, they, have, they feel yeah. the right, it feels right. Yeah. So then moving on, okay. you, you were also a fan of the burlesque. <laughs> well, uh, who isn't? Honestly. Right. And then, of course, you missed this show at Carnegie Hall, which, by the way, that was your address in New York, which was an actual apartment building at the time. Uh -huh. West 115th Street. West 115th Street. That's great. I and love it up there. And then your ticket to Carnegie Hall, which you unfortunately never got to go to. <laughs> but uh, you missed that. But what we wanted to do was fill out your wallet. Because oh, that's your life. Yeah. That's a yeah. person's life yeah, yeah, was in yeah. their wallet. So yeah. these were all things that we decided needed to exist within your wallet. And of course, like every man in the 1940s, you smoke 10 packs of cigarettes a day. Yeah. <laughs> but at that time, you're in France. So you would have French cigarettes. And Galois this is, or, yeah, or yeah. Parisians. Which yeah. are, this is a, a brand that was created by Earl Hayes. Absolutely. It's one of the fake yeah. brands. So moving forward, we have your French identity card, your checkbook, because you have to have a Can checkbook. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. This is an original checkbook. Oh, my God. Paris, France. Yeah. Oh my God, this paper is so. Oh, it's beautiful. beautiful. <sighs> this is what I was talking about last time. That way in mm -hmm. which you print something with such high detail, yeah. it's almost impossible to replicate. Yeah. And this is. And so the, we know that the book is original, but the stamps aren't. These are created by Earl Hayes. So really? That, yeah. And we have later. We'll show oh you all how they goodness. got all this stuff and oh. why they would have had it, etc. Wow. Incredible. So we we moved on from your checkbook. Now your life in France. We've established who you are, why in New York, and right, when you right. left, and you're in France. You have your identity card, you're walking around cash, your little uh, dictionary, uh -huh, because uh -huh. maybe you're not super fluent in sure. French. But who, who is? Because I wanted to also tie this back with Earl Hayes, you have to have a cover. You, know, you are there under an assumed identity. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. have to have an assumed job. So you are working at Maison Narcisse, uh -huh. which is a tailor and you are a dressmaker, just like Earl Hayes was. <laughs> you don't actually do the work because you're there as a courier. You're existing yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're a spy, right? Well, May, May 30th, 1940, France has fallen. You receive a, a telegram and it is written in code. Oh, look at this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and it's folded like a telegram. Oh, <laughs> this makes me so happy. And this is literally, this is great. This is uh, ticker tape, right? Tele it's, telegraph it, tape? It's the, so it's actually printer paper because telegraph tape, the telegraph tape, this, this is real telegraph tape. Right, no, tape I here. know, but it's-, it's Yeah, it, that's yeah. how it was done. It was, so a telegram came out of a machine like this mm -hmm. with paper like this, and then someone would paste it onto yep. the telegram. Right. It's um, so- just but because this is a movie in the 1940s and very yeah. few people in the United States would speak French or they would assume <laughs> yeah. that, it would then, the scene, it would be a close up of you looking at your, your uh, right. telegram and code, which that's a real code, by the way. Excellent. That's the Culper code from the Revolutionary War, <laughs> which would have been readily available to people at the time. Excellent. Because at that time, the code that we were using was called Sigaba. And Sigaba wasn't actually declassified until 1996, so no one would have known about it. Amazing. Yeah. And it's a, similar to the uh, Enigma, except Enigma used five uh, code disks, Sigaba machine used 15. It was a much more complex machine. Wow. But okay. you do the close-up of that uh -huh. where it's in, in code, but then it has to be decoded. So it fuzzes out and then you oh, see what it we says. Go. Identi France has fallen. Stop. Identity compromise. Stop. Destroy all documents. Evacuate France through Casablanca to New York or London. Stop. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a MacGuffin for a movie that <laughs> never got made. Right. This is so awesome. So now you've got to get out. Right. So you have to go to your stash, this your is the secret point. stash. This is the moment. Now, within your secret stash, you're gonna have your real identity, your true name, your true identity. What's, what's, what's I just wanted to point out, yeah. like I could see the, I, this is a safety deposit box, and I know this because I found one on the street in New York when I was 18. Nice. And it was one of the very <laughs> first, and it had like the, the hand-painted gold pinstriping mm -hmm. around it, that one did, and it was one of the very first boxes that compelled me as a vessel of holding, which is now like one of my well, primary yeah. obsessions. Absolutely. So I totally recognize the little safety deposit box. I'm so sorry. Continue. No, no, sorry, sorry. No, so well, this safety deposit box is from the 1930s. It's a European design. It came out of my kit. I had it stashed, <laughs> so I brought it with me. But you get there, 
Your real identity, everything that you yeah. need to get out is there. So you go into your secret, into the room by yourself, and you open it. And inside is everything you need <gasps> to get out of the country. It's Bourne's box. It's Bourne's box. But if it was the 1940s. Right, 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 right. So obviously you got to have a hideout piece. You got to get out. A little, little, little Colt, Colt 25 Auto. Uh -huh, wear it on your ankle. Yeah, just drop it in your pocket and you go. This would also be how your employers would act as a mailbox. You would go here right. once a month and then mail. You would get your mail in here, and these letters are from your girlfriend and your mom. So, <laughs> amazing. And then your alternate passports. Now, these passports are real, these are not printed up. Got it. So, you have a Hungarian passport in case you have to go through Hungary. <laughs> oh, wow. Right. Oh, my goodness. And then an Argentinian passport. Wow. And, and these were the covers they these had? These were the covers that they had at the time. Oh, my goodness. <gasps> And your U.S. passport, we're actually printing right now, and here in a bit we're going to make your French passport. But your French identity, you got to burn it. Right, because so that's been compromised. Yeah, so okay. in May 1940, the United States was not at war with Germany. So you were technically neutral. So you could move under your U.S. identity if you had to. It was amazing. Okay. But you don't want to. So at the time, Hungary was still not fully involved in the war and Argentina was completely not involved in the war. So you would be able to actually move under those. But to do so, you need money. Mm -hmm. And that's what this box is set up for. You have, this is gonna be confusing to some people, but it makes sense for the <laughs> okay. time period. You have pesos, Mexican pesos. In 1915, the United States passed a law that US currency could not be seen on screen. And it was until 1960 that you really started seeing US currency. So all US currency, depicted on screen, was pesos. This was what yes. people thought dollars looked, looked like, like in the movies. Yes, because at the end of the Mexican Revolution, a very enterprising individual named Earl Hayes realized that the Mexican peso was then worthless. Right. And he went and he bought truckloads of those very bills. Oh and that God. became the standard of US currency up until the 60s. So since this is filmed in 1942, the money we're gonna see on screen for US currency is the Mexican peso. Now. This also is your mailbox. This is also where you get your paycheck, which is from a, <laughs> oh. which is from a bank in Monte Carlo. <laughs> then it's your, what amounts to about $250 a month. Right. And that allows you to survive. Wow. Uh, and this is your monthly stipend. Well, you got it on May 15th. You hadn't cashed it or deposited it yet. This check is now worthless. Oh, right. Okay. Right, so burned. <laughs> now, you're told to go through Casablanca. Uh -huh. Your French money is good because it's a French colony. But if you have to go through Egypt, you have Egyptian money. Oh, look at these, oh my <laughs> goodness. Amazing, I love that you've tr figured out all the paths I can take. Well, there's multiple paths yeah, because yeah, at the yeah. time, though it was a fascist country, Spain was also neutral. Uh huh. So you have Spanish currency Incredible. as well. And then British pounds, because you never know, you might This make, is British pounds? Yeah, these are pounds sterling from the period. Wow, oh, those are lovely. Yeah, all fake, of course. Of course. Extra French currency. All right. And all right. then, well, some Germany is right there. Yeah, some German marks. Now, we, we went ahead and we used some pre-war because of the, the insignia. Some iconography, sure. <laughs> yeah, iconography <laughs> that might be considered problematic today. Fair enough. So we used these. So you have every currency for every major economy around France at the time to get out. Incredible. So you have money for bribes. You have yeah, money to yeah. pay your way. You have everything you need, multiple identities to get out little bits of personal business here and there, and then of course, a hideout piece to help you along the way. But you get to Morocco, you are in Casablanca. Yeah, yeah. How do you get out? Well, it doesn't matter what uh, identity you're under, there's only one piece of paper that you need to get out. The letter of transit. The letter of transit. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the original right. from 1942's Casablanca. Do not use. Yeah, I, I made sure this of that. This is the original first print yes. off the press of the Casablanca letter of transit. Yes, and we I are- I just wanted to say that one more time because that's amazing. So we're going to print one of these. Actually, we're gonna print several of these mm -hmm. and then uh, we're gonna make one of these for your character. Oh, wow. Because we have to, yeah. but it will be undated. Right. Because it would have been signed by Charles de Gaulle and left open so that you could fill in the date that you need to leave. Which, because of the time it gets to, it takes to yeah. get from France down to Casablanca, you don't reach Casablanca until December 5th, 1941, several months later. Yeah. And you board a plane with two other individuals, one a Hungarian citizen and the other a Danish citizen, and you fly out from the airport in Casablanca on December 6th, 1941, tying it in directly to the end 
of the 1942 film Casablanca. Incredible. <laughs> Michael! <laughs> um, I mean, what is really beautiful about this is it is not just a simulacrum of a, of a plot, of an object, of a MacGuffin, uh, and of how they come to be, but you know, one of the things I love covering on Tested specifically is how uh, films are not the sole vision of a singular director's it takes mind. A village, yeah. That is a management structure in which everyone below the director is also weaving and getting involved in and pushing beautiful narratives. And this is exactly the same. We took this simple, simple idea I had and ran so far and so deep. <laughs> it's just fantastic. Well, it was such a beautiful opportunity to one tell a story and let my mind and Kim's mind take over and yeah. run with this, but then also tie it into one of the greatest films of all time, yeah. and also these wonderful pieces that exist here and were created here for that film, and tie in this story with that story and tell the same story, uh, tell the story of both at the same time. So now when, when, when you're going through and coming up with the original list of the items that it should hold, um, it looks to me like some of the choices you made are based on the institutional knowledge of what has gone before, what other people have thrown in to make for characters. Because you've got these little things like pawn tickets mm -hmm. uh, and burlesque tickets in yeah. Carnegie Hall. Yeah. Um, that's that kind of depth that Earl Haynes brings to. Oh yes, absolutely, and this and, kind of problem solving. And they have a very unique. Uh, way to do it because they've been around for so long yeah. and they've been doing it before the internet was ever a thing. Right. They had to reach out to everyone to get examples of absolutely everything and they still have it all here. Right. All of this comes from originals that are in the building. So, and that have been in the building, well, have been with the company since 1915 right. and on. Incredible. Yeah, which is why we're able to make hyper-accurate French passports from 1940, because we have original passports Oh, and am I right that that's an original and that's the copy? Uh, so yes, this is one of the background screen used. Right. Uh, which is interesting that the name Philip Pétain is on there because it was the commanding general of all French forces in 1940. And then this is the fake that was made here. This is the replica that was made yeah. here recently. Yeah. And these are more covers that were made. These are original covers made during the period and original pages made during the period. Would you, you could, you could actually acid etch staples mm -hmm. and rust them before putting them before in a stapler in, yep. so you would get a... But since this is supposed to be during that time period... Oh, since so it's supposed to be new, the staples yeah. wouldn't be... Oh yeah. my God, of course. Yeah, and these are steel staples, which would have been used, not stainless steel. So we used the correct <laughs> staples when we made it. So it's as... And the only difference with between these two is that one, these were laser printed right. because these plates don't exist anymore. Yeah. They're long gone. So we have to make do in some ways. And one of them was that we were, they were printed on this um, amazing mimaki behind you. And they were, we were able to color match, we were able to remove the filth of, of, the, of, of the years and create them as if they were made in 1940. Incredible. Okay, Michael, we're gonna walk through the French passport here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, we are. So at, we've discussed this before. A lot of times the things that have been found here have been found on a random shelf in a random box, et cetera. Yeah. This is no different. This was just a little while ago this was discovered. Because I'm looking at the name on that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a suspiciously familiar name, isn't it? <laughs> it's Vic, is that really Victor Laszlo's? <laughs> this, freaking... this is actually one of the production-made oh. passports from Casablanca for the character Victor Laszlo, played by Paul Reinhardt. And this one does not have the art in it. And you can see it was, it was all filled out. And then wow. they used it to test stamps later on. <laughs> so, wow, and signatures. <laughs> Those and, signatures, oh so it, it ended up being a, like a test pad. Look at that. But they did fill in everything. Wow. And then the classic void yeah, yeah, and not, yeah. for, not valid for motion, motion picture, picture use, use only. only. Oh my goodness. So this God. is an original from the production of the film. Oh my God. This is what we based yeah. these on, because we, and by we, I mean Kim Behrens, the magnificent yeah. graphic designer here, went through and scanned the original, right. and then through digital means, cleaned up all of the dirt and age, yeah, yeah, and yeah. recreated Whoa. all the elements of the interior. Look at that. So this is, may I just talk about this for of a second? Of course. I mean, this is the kind of thing that uh, not being, if you don't pay attention to the right details, everything falls apart. And you can see there's this sort of like handmade aspect to this where mm -hmm. these red lines are not perfectly even, but that really feels like a kind of a period, oh, yeah. uh, counterfeit proof kind of thing. 
And Kim has just nailed every last bit of it. I know there's some color variants in the paper, but that's not really as important as how these graphics feel like this was printed in the 40s. Mm -hmm. And, and wow. this all started out as off-white paper. Right. Because all of the color had to be added in, and we took into account fading over the last sure, 80 years sure. and the variations in color. But she perfectly matched it. And then, then comes the next difficult step is, well, one, we have to match the handwriting, which is going to be a fun right, process right. by hand. And then the stamps, all of these individual stamps, which are crossed over each other, and it's a big, huge mess. Yeah. So... She again, oh. she pulled every single one of them out, no created way. digital versions of them, and then we began the process of testing them. Oh my goodness. For color, for variation. And then I, wow. On different shades right. to see which color works the best. So they didn't just, I would just assume that they would use black. They didn't. Because we, it's the highest contrast, no. No, but in black and white film, black shows up different than blue, shows up different than purple. Right, so while the film isn't in color, colors do make a difference. Yes. And so they chose their color specifically here, this kind of blue, purple. purple thing. Yeah. So, well, that ink obviously doesn't exist anymore. Right. So what do we do? Oh, so these are all your ink tests. Yes. Okay, now so I... So <laughs> we had to go buy every shade of ink we could find wow. to then figure out what the correct shade was. And then that process we got through that and then there's paper stamps under right. here yeah, as well yeah i was noticing these little doodads so is kim again uh the absolute talent that she is oh went through goodness. and recreated all of those stamps two different colors because it's two different colors of paper mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna glue all these down we are yes oh yay and then we're gonna run all of the stamps and this this right here void is yeah. a problem because those are actually punched through yeah. the paper. Right. And you can see the light coming through. That machine used to do that is, they're almost non-existent now. Really? And we don't have one. Okay. So we made a stamp that, to uh, replicate it. Oh! And then of course to replicate, not valid for motion picture use only. Now we have images, there's at least a couple of these passports known to survive. Right, right, right. And we have plenty of reference images of how they all look but they're all different. So they're like where we know that all of our US passports are gonna be perfectly uniform in their form. Mm -hmm. Back then, different passport offices might've had small differences in the page layouts. Absolutely, they'd had different layouts, wow. but there are more than one Victor Laszlo passport oh. and each one is different. That's really interesting. But we do know that they made other passports because this is one of the screen use background passports. You've been able to screen yeah, match Yeah, this. I've been able to screen match the number. The name is covered. Wow. But it's empty. There's oh, right. So this is, the, and because it was only ever needed to be yeah. held in the background. Yeah, you just see the guy talking to the other guy at the table. Oh, and I that's just, the passport. And them. we found out from previous owners, these were rented. Wow. They weren't purchased by the production. Right, of course. They were just rented. So yeah. they sent them back. They got used in other movies that got remade. <clears> and we have this as another reference. So the differences are all over the place. So creating one that's screen accurate is almost impossible. Right. Right. But oh, we I can see. get close. Right. We can get as close as humanly possible, which is what, which is what we've done here. Primarily the work is Kim Barron's done, doing an amazing job with all of this stuff. She is doing incredible work pulling out from this noisy data. Oh yes, there's a lot going on in this. Pulling some of this out from this noisy data is incredible. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure there were other reference materials and like. Oh, we have, we're, it's another one of the wonderful things about Earl Hayes Press is that we not only have this as a reference, but we also have the reference that was used to make it. Right, these, of course, of course, of course. Which is this. This is the original art layout board. No. For the past. We, I was thinking you guys put this together. No, we did, but back in the 30s. Right. Because it was originally made for the great Ziegfeld, which is dated, fortunately for us, it's dated. Metro Golden Mayor. February 17th. February 17th is uh, a couple of days after production began on Casablanca. Wow. So that's the approval stamp. That, and then this is the date for the beginning of production for the great Ziegfeld. So there are differences, but this is what they based it on. And when they went to go do this, they had actually received a passport from the French government. And from, each of these is a high quality, mm -hmm. photographable. Yep. That they were then able to use to make plates 
that they then ran on a printing press to create these. 31 pieces. 31 pikas, oh my yep. God, right, four prints. They're actually explaining on the piece exactly how big it needs to yep. be. So this is this is the actual business end of the institutional knowledge. It is, absolutely. This is the piece that after production gets put away so that you can always make it again. Yeah, we can go back to it oh, and come great. back at it. And, there's, and you look at it, you can see there's differences. It's where oh. they hand drew the emblem that's on the front right. to remake it. Amazing. And it's just, it's so full of history, this document right here. Yeah. And then when you realize that this is genesis, essentially, right. of the Casablanca passports. This is where everything came from. Wow. So we are working with the original reference <laughs> from 1942. <laughs> that is um, I, it just like this plus this is such an amazing <laughs> kind of a piece of film history. I mean, have you ever done a replica with this much original reference? No. So I have no, I have yet <laughs> I have yet to build one of these. Oh great. So this is my first time building one. So, we, oh. so and I'm happy that the first time I'm building one building one of these is with Adam Savage. So <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So this should be a lot of fun. So we'll get started. We have to put all the stamps in yep. this, yeah. which is the first thing that goes down and we have to so we look at this page, which is the noisiest page yeah. in here in all of this. And we have to determine what, what went down first. Right. My guess, and this is a guess, mm -hmm. is that the paper stamps went down before right. anything. Well, and it clearly, white stamps went down before, oh, wait, no. It's, it seems to no, be. It looks from top to bottom. They just actually, that was first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Mm -hmm. And I, I looks think it's like the, it's the same, same from order. here. So yeah. it's top to bottom. And then three big stamps, three big stamps. And then there's, oh, wow, right. And then, so there's this. Yeah, wow. and they just kind of, but, and this was something that Kim pointed out to me. Mm -hmm. This is supposedly the travel of Victor Laszlo. Right. Throughout the film. So, and we have a map here to explain this because it's a weird travel that makes no <laughs> sense. Oh, so, neat. So, but it also tells the end of the story we never see in the movie. So, he begins in France and he travels to Iran, uh, down there, right? Iran, right. From Iran, he goes to Algiers. Uh-huh. And from Algiers, uh, this little town is not on the map, but it's right around here. Okay. And then he ends up in Casablanca, all right. the way over here. Yeah. Then he goes from Casablanca to Avion, up to France. Uh huh. And then he ends up in the United States. So he made it out. <laughs> the passport makes it clear. <laughs> the he passport made it makes out. it clear that he made it out. He got out September twelfth, nineteen forty-two, which is the date production ended. That's really neat. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay, so. Uh, so we, we started with this, we had this, we, it came this, scanned everything. The next step in all this is choosing paper, choosing the correct weight of paper. Right, which, right. Fortunately, Earl Hayes has about 100 years worth of paper out here. So once we've selected the grade of paper, mm -hmm. uh, the correct weight, the correct feel of it, yeah. for both the cover and, and the interior it, pages. Like, I would be doing, I would be like touching this paper, touching this paper. Mm -hmm. Same is it thing? any more advanced than that? Nope. That's okay. Much it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the it's the finger feel. Okay. Yeah. Right. Basically, we we feel what is correct for it, and then yeah. we move forward from there. Right. And then it all goes into Photoshop. It gets cleaned up. Mm -hmm. It gets printed mm -hmm. out. And now we're left with this. So now we have to start applying color to it. But that's a very specific purple. Everything under there is a very specific right, purple. Right. We'll right. have to mix that. But we got to cut all these out first. Okay. All right, so now we have all of our, our little stamps cut out. Probably. And and I have I have noticed something. Yeah. I think that when Kim created this, she used a different passport as reference because there's minor differences. I, I was just noticing and some I, minor, minor differences. And I think that they were just pulling from a bin. Yeah. And that's well, what ended enough. up on it because who's going to notice, no, right? Absolutely. But we're going to get as close as we can. And it. back then when they glued all this stuff down, they would have used just paste in a of jar. Course. But we're going to use glue stick because it's About easier. The same. About the same. Yeah, it's more or less the same, right? All right. And then we'll try and position them as cleanly as possible onto the page. So we've got, that's sitting right at the and it's edge. Two, this is two pieces. Yeah, it's yeah. one layered over the other, and one of them is turned. So we have one. They're 90 degrees out from each other. And then the next step is this guy. No, it's this one right here. You're right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it is. There's the, uh, yeah. It's like a really weird puzzle. 
But that's all the paper props. I know, it's are always there, always that right? way, yeah. It is an education in bureaucratic precision, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> of the development of bureaucratic precision. So uh, I just noticed this over on one of the computers, and it's actually something worth bringing up. These are Schrader, Shadler rulers. So when I was a young graphic designer, which was one of the very first uh, 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 careers I had as a young person. I was did graphic design for about four years in Manhattan in the latter half of the 80s. The first graphic design tool I spent real money on was a pair of Shadler Precision Rules because these were at the time and probably still are the gold standard of traceable, precise Pika uh, measurements for typesetting. Uh, and I used this as a type specker, but I just, I looked I, all the way across the room, I saw this hanging off a computer and I'm like, Shadlers, yeah. I totally remember buying these. I remember being told about them. I remember being like, I gotta get me a pair of those because those are what the pros use. And then reading in the documentation that they're traceable to the US standard of what a Pika is. And like, I was like, traceable? That's the first time I like got obsessed with the word traceable. Anyway, I just thought you'd want to know about those. So we have all the, the paper stamps down. Right. Now we gotta start applying all this and it looks like... And there's there's two, at least two kinds of stamps. There's yeah. a rectangular and a circle. Did right. you, did you, it looks like all the circles are the same. Yeah, the circles are all the same. And, and the circle is actually the stamp of Casablanca that they just reused over and over and over again. It's also <laughs> the same stamp that goes on the letter of transit. And so this is that? That's that right there. Okay. Yeah. So for some reason in Iran, they were using the stamp of Casablanca. Sure. Yeah, just <laughs> like you do. Fair enough. And, it looks to me on this original, yeah, these blue, it, it's all the same color of purple. Yeah, They're yeah. not like variances yeah. of the color. So my, my guess, and it's a, a guess based on just everything else that I've yeah. seen here, is that the guy that created this just grabbed the stamp and went, dum, dum, dum. Yeah, so a little bit of blue, a yeah. little bit of purple. Yeah, and if it varies. Me, yeah, no, yeah, it's yeah. exactly right. <laughs> so can I do this? Yeah, yeah, by all means. Uh, so it's got four on that side. Yeah. yeah. Ta -ta, ta -ta. And then this one is a little bit off and yeah. it's off to the side and we're just gonna go and there it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. This one came across and it's over. There we go. Um, ta -ta, ta -ta, ta -ta. Yep. Uh, number three. All right, I'm doing it, it's, it's I'm not as messy as, did they really just do four? No, it's five. Is it five? It is five. One, One two, two, three, four, oh, five. Oh, it is five, yeah. They just kind of stack them, don't they? Oh my God, and here we go. Okay, and yeah. so, and then this is the same color. Yeah, it yeah, is exactly yeah. the same color. Oh, say. So I, I probably, this. this probably has enough blue on it now. You probably don't need to transfer any longer because it looks like it's mixed ah, up pretty good. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. I see that this has enough blue on it. Yeah. Okay. So doing this to get the yeah. color correct. There we go. Oh my God, this is terrifying. All right. <laughs> and then the second one, here we go. All right. And now we do the circular. Now we do the circular one. And this is this is your, your seal that you're allowed to enter Casablanca, the, apparently from every other country. Right. <laughs> All right, so here comes the first one. Oh, I didn't get enough down there. Oh. All right. And then here comes the second one. Beautiful. And there's three, yeah. yeah. Oh my God, this is so much fun. This is like movie prop making fantasy camp. Actually, I don't know. And then three, three over here. I was going. Oh, the other's totally off the page on that one, aren't they? Yeah, yeah no, this I just went all over the shop. Yeah. There's also all sorts of funny stuff going on there. 
Magnificent. Now, this stamp down here, which is the passport office for oh, the United yeah. States, yeah. that wasn't on any of the other passports. So okay. we think that's one of the tests that they were using this for because ah, they kept using right. it as a, as, a, as a test pad. Copy that. So now we now none of these stamps need to be transferred over here until we get your picture down. So right now I have to fill all this out with all of your information, but the first thing I need, I need a name. Oh, uh, an actual name. Yeah, so what is your French alias? Oh, um. This is a weird one. Yeah, let's do this. An old friend of my family's is his, uh, my, two of my parents' best friends were V. Henry and Jacqueline Rothschild. Okay. So V. Henry Rothschild. All right. He's an old family friend. I grew up with him. Let's just take his name as my fake French name. All right. All right, Adam. We oh. have the entire history of your character from the start of the story to the end. You arrive in Paris, 12, 19, 1939. You receive the message to get out because France has fallen May 30th, 1940. You escape to Bilbao in Spain. You spend several months there because it's hard to get out. Well, with the fascist government there, it's right, very right. difficult. Sure, sure. You go from there to Algiers. And from Algiers, you catch a plane to Casablanca. And then from there, you get on the same avion flight on December 6th, 1941, <laughs> which eventually you arrive in New York. 1712, 1942, December 17th, 1942. It takes you almost two years to get home. Amazing. Well, it takes V. Henry Rothschild <laughs> that long to get home. <laughs> so now we've got to do what they do with every passport in film is we have to avoid them. So they really do do this? Yes, they absolutely do. Even today, we still void them out just in case somebody tries to use it. Amazing. Yeah, and then this will, is the replicating the process by which they would void them out. They would be punched through the page, of course. Right, right, right. And of course, it'd be on both sides. And this is a legal requirement for um, Earl Haynes. Yes, to void out anything that they make, or make it so different that it can't be usable right, as right, right. a fake. I don't think people realize that like when film money, when you see some scene in the film where money's like flying through the air, this is really problematic because there's a very reasonable likelihood that someone on set's gonna try and pass one of those bills. And it has happened numerous times. I know, I keep, he, I've heard about it, tons and tons of yeah. versions of that I mean, there's, story. I don't wanna name any names, but there are several stories of uh, places being raided because right. of it. Right, well yeah. I mean especially, yeah, the Secret Service isn't, isn't sitting there being like, oh, yeah, it's an they honest don't, mistake. They, they don't take it lightly. <laughs> As no, it turns really out, they take it somewhat no, serious. I totally get that. That now, makes sense. For the very last step in this, mm -hmm. the very back page. Oh, we, for big motion pictures yeah, only the classic. Not valid. Yeah, yes, this yes, is yes. such a wonderfully like classic this design. Is, I have this in original movie props I own. Yeah. Is, and and now we can add it. That's the stamp. Oh now this God. of course is a brand new stamp, because yeah. all of these yeah, old yeah. stamps have long since rotted away. We're gonna do it in red. Would you like to do I it? I would love yeah, to do so. this. And just like right yep. there, yeah, on both pages. On both pages. Oh, ah. yeah, but, but they stamp over it a bunch, so you can put it as okay. many times as you want. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. This is now a completed Casablanca esque. A MacGuffin from a, MacGuffin. a Casablanca type movie. So now doesn't exist. I have to give me a few minutes, and I will complete the entire ensemble, all of your pieces, okay. and then you can go from V. Henry Rothschild to Adam Savage. <laughs> on your travels from Paris on the day that France has fallen all the way to Casablanca where you board the plane with Victor Laszlo and Elsa Lund and head back to New York to continue your job as an, by that time, an agent of the Office of Strategic Services during the Second World War. Amazing, so, all I need now is a time machine. I, it's probably best you just stay in this timeline because <laughs> I feel like it was unpleasant then. Fair enough. <laughs> That's my identity card in This, is, this is your entire wallet. This is your whole life, <laughs> plus your passport. As V. Henry Rothschild, Monsieur Rothschild. Incredible. So. This is a person. Yeah, that is an entire person created out of thin air from paper, just through research Amazing. and everything, and then a story attached to it. <laughs> it's May 30th, 1940. You've woken up. You're getting ready to perform your duties <laughs> as a courier for yes. the War Department under the name V. Henry Rothschild, a French citizen who actually works as a dressmaker at 
in Paris. However, a young man runs up to you, Monsieur, Monsieur, message. You receive Here is the a telegram, telegram. The telegram in code. Mm -hmm. The telegram in code. You decode that telegram. And here is the and here is the message. Get out of get out. Get out. Too bad we can't stay. Right. So now it's time to leave. You go to the bank. You go to your safety deposit box. All of that useless to you now. You no, right. burn this is that. To be burned. Yeah, that's all. That mm. whole identity is dead. And then you go to your new identity. The new version. Or of whichever me. one oh. is most convenient. Oh. It's not completed yet, unfortunately. Amazing, amazing. With so much involved. Look at this. But. This is your burn box from 1940 with leftovers of your life. Oh my God. So that you can return to your life in New York as needed as Adam W. Savage. Dude, this is, this is just this is such a beautiful thing. Oh my God, crazy. Michael, I, I can't thank you enough for one, the fantasy camp of making this burn <laughs> box. But you know, in, in doing this kind of replication when I have done it, it has all been out of a passion for storytelling and for the history of film. And it, it rarely has occurred to me in the early days of my prop replication that the people who actually did this work were having as much fun as I do when I do it. And it is delightful to realize that this institution is exactly having that much fun telling these kind of stories. Oh, it's it's been an absolute gas to use a 1940s phrase that to make all this and to create these characters out of thin air yeah. and to just go with the smallest of brief and then take it to the next level and have all of this amazing come from it. Well, I, I, and I really, I love having this sort of deep walkthrough of exactly how Earl Haynes plies its trade mm -hmm. because it is a beautiful trade. and. We can't transmit to you the smell of this building, but it smells <laughs> like paper in every form paper can exist. And old paper to boot, I just I love this. To me, this it. place smells like history. Yeah. It really does, because it is the history of Hollywood within these walls. And oh. I know, I know as much as I can of you from Tested and yeah. from the times that I've interacted with you, I know that you're gonna take this and you're gonna improve upon it. Oh, I'm gonna run so with this, this to MacGuffin. To make that a yeah. little bit easier, all of this is yours to take with you. <gasps> no! Everything. Uh, the gun, the box, all of the internals, everything. I'm gonna cry. Don't you don't have to, but it's <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Also, my wallet. You can have my wallet too. <laughs> <laughs> this is just amazing. So by all please improve upon it. Make them you know, yeah. make more tell the story deeper, you know, make the character flesh them out even more. Um, and and then just absolutely run wild with it, please. Uh, from from all of us here at Earl Hayes Press, from props to history to Adam Savage and Tested, all of this stuff. Take it further, dude. Dude, thank you guys so much for joining me here at the amazing Earl Hayes Press. Michael Corey, thank, thank you, you so, much. so much. See you guys next time. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that video. I cannot tell you how much fun we had filming it. I want to take a moment to thank Michael Corey, props to history and specifically Earl Hayes Press for their incredible generosity of the time and energy they have given us to let us follow along as they unpack and reveal the incredible history in this and all of their other buildings. And if you have been watching any of these Earl Hayes videos and content and wondering to yourself, how do I add any of that incredible history to my prop collection? You are in luck because Earl Hayes has started to make parts of their incredible collection available to the public. If you've ever wanted your own package of Smeet, well, you can follow the link in the description below and go buy it. This is just one of many things available and more will become available as time continues. Thanks again to Michael and Earl Hayes. See you guys later.